Hello and welcome to the episode 286 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. During this show, we'll witness the official birth of Beatlemania, the release of a dodgy single, and the recording of the last song of the White Album. On the 13th of October 1960, the Beatles, in their quintet lineup with Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed their 10th evening at the Kaiser Keller in Hamburg, West Germany. Two years later, in 1962, the Beatles, now in their definitive lineup with Ringo Starr on drums, had their 109th evening engagement at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. On this date, in 1963, the Beatles were engaged at the London Palladium to record their debut on Val Parnell's Sunday Night at the London Palladium. At the time, the show was probably the pinnacle of one's career for a British artist, with millions of people, 15 millions for this particular show, tuned in to watch. It is a statement of how much the music business has changed that today one has to explain what the fuss was about. The Beatles were top of the bill tonight, earning £250, about £5,300 in 2020 money. The four appeared briefly at the beginning of the program, and then at the end of it, for the closing section. They performed From Me To You, I'll Get You, She Loves You, and finally Twist and Shout. This was also the night when Beatlemania was officially born. During the filming of the show, screaming and almost riotous fans blocked Argyll Street, and the inside of the theatre became the inferno the Beatles were now almost used to. The fracas was such that, finally, the national press took notice of what was happening around these four lads from Liverpool, and, on the morning, they reported the event with front-page photographs and big titles. The Beatles' arrival in a shuffered Austin Princess car, undoubtedly an idea of their manager Brian Epstein, showing up in their usual well-used van, would have diminished the band's mystique. The screaming inside the hallowed hall of the theatre, the impossibility for the band to even introduce their numbers, with John Lennon shouting shut up! when Paul was submerged by noise while introducing Twist and Shout, the applauses of the older members of the audience for John's impatience with the band's younger audience and their manners. It was all reported, and it was all instant history. In 1964, the Beatles continued their British tour after a day of rest, playing two shows at the ABC Cinema in Wigan. On the 13th of October 1965, the Fabs returned at the EMI Studios in London for a recording session lasting from 7 pm to 12.15 am. It was the first time the band had actually stopped recording after midnight. The order of the day was recording Drive My Car, with four takes needed to complete the rhythm track with John on tambourine, Paul on bass, George on electric guitar and Ringo on drums. Overdubs included Paul's guitar work during the intro and the coda, his guitar solo, vocals by John and Paul with George on harmonies, a piano part by John, and cowbell by Ringo. 1967. On this date, in a shrewd promotional stunt, United Artists released the How I Won the War song as a single. The song was attributed to Musketeer Gripwid and the Third Troop. With Gripwid being the name of John Lennon's character in the film How I Won the War, everyone had the clear impression that this was a single featuring, or even by, John Lennon, without the Beatles. It was, in fact, only the theme music of the film, combined with a mix of dialogue and some sound effects straight from the soundtrack. In other news, the editing of the Magical Mystery Tour film went on at Norman's Film Productions. Let's close the episode with another recording session, this one taking place in 1968. 
On this date, at EMI Studios, John Lennon started and completed Julia. It was the first time that one of his Beatles songs featured only him, on vocals and acoustic guitar. It was also the last White Album piece to be recorded, a task accomplished in three takes. John rounded up the basic track re-recording and overdubbing his vocals and adding a second guitar track. The rest of the 7 pm to 6 am session saw the completion of the mixing of Julia, Dear Prudence and Blackbird in stereo and mono, and of Wild Honey Pie and Back in the USSR in stereo. The session concludes the episode. If you fancy the podcast, please visit www.simonmas.com support to see how you can help me to produce more and better music-related content, and to grow our community of music lovers. Tomorrow, among other things, we'll touch on another TV appearance. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.